Insight leads to compassion. I'd been on the Indianapolis Police Department all of four minutes. I'm exactly what a brand new rookie looks like. I'm excited, I'm motivated, and I have that I'm gonna save the world mentality. This particular night, I'm sitting in my cop car in a cemetery. <laughs> my partner's sitting in hers, and we're talking about the full moon. There'd been a full moon that night, and we had gone on a lot of crazy runs, with a lot of them being bogus. Suddenly, our radio goes off, and we get a call of a woman on fire in the middle of the street. I look at my partner, my partner looks at me, and I said, you know what? I'll go and see if there's anybody on fire, and then I'm going home. It's 3.15 in the morning, and I'm due to be off at 3.30. Within 30 seconds, my life changed forever. I arrived on the scene, got out of my car, and saw a woman in flames. The screams coming from her, I still have nightmares about. I didn't know what to do. We locked eyes. I was able to grab a blanket, and I ran toward her. As, we got, as I got closer to her, she reached her arms out to me, and that's when I could see and smell the skin dripping from them. I quickly threw the blanket on top of her, and we both fell to the ground. It was in that moment the insight that I realized into my new world and what it was going to be about. The pain and the compassion that I had for the victims that I really, really wanted to save. The medics arrived, I gained my composure. I started to walk back towards my police car when I saw a man stand in the doorway of an entryway of an apartment complex. He was holding a gas can. I quickly drew my gun, and I'll give you the G-rated version. And I ran up to him and I said, turn around, put that gas can down. Put your hands behind your back. And I ran up and I cuffed him quickly. I walked him back toward my police car, opened up the door, and as he leaned in, he stopped. He turned and he looked at me and he said, I told that bitch not to leave. I quickly shut the door. In that moment, I gained a little bit more insight into the horrible things that human beings will do to one another. I continued to work the street. I loved it. I loved the adrenaline rush. I love you didn't know what you were going to get every night at work. I thought the more people I arrested, the better cop I was. Until one night, I ran across a young man who transformed the way I viewed my role. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and a call comes out of a theft of a pair of Air Jordans. OK. I start to head that way when I spot the suspect. The suspect spots me, and he goes darting between the houses. I jump out of my car. The chase is on. He's fast. I'm able to keep him in sight, so I see him trip and fall, and he falls flat on his face. Fantastic. Gives me enough time to catch up to him. I jump on top of him, and I get him cuffed. I get him to his feet, it's a young kid, and I look down and I see the shoes. I'm thinking, ah, oh, I love my job. I tentatively ask him his name and address and he tells me. We start to walk him back to his house and I'm thinking in my brain, I'm gonna let his parents know what he did and then I'm gonna haul his butt off to jail. We arrive to his house, there's no lights on. We walk up the steps, the front door is open, we walk in, I flip open the light, and the walls start to move. There are roaches everywhere. The house was infested. On the couch lies his mother, completely passed out. Next to her is an empty liquor bottle, and in front of her there's this glass table with three crack pipes. There's an ashtray with a burning cigarette. There's no food, there's no running water, there's nothing. Suddenly, my suspect leans down next to his mom, and he starts crying profusely. And he keeps apologizing to me about how sorry he is that he took these shoes. I thought, ah, oh, how can I arrest this young kid for a crime that I actually understood? And when had he last eaten? The insight that I gained to his story 
gave me compassion. I didn't arrest him. I got him some help. Before long, five years went by, and I got an itch to try investigations. I wanted to be a detective. I landed in the domestic violence unit. I was a domestic violence detective. And I won't lie, I wasn't overly excited about it, because you kind of know who your suspects are in all your cases, right? But I worked it, and the challenge for me wasn't locking up the batterers. It was understanding why the victims go back. Every case that came across my desk, I worked it. Got evidence, took photographs, got statements, made the arrest. Court would come, victim wouldn't show, charges dismissed, victim suspect back in love. Frustrating. It's complicated, is what my victims would tell me, as they're looking back at me with two bruised eyes and a broken nose. One night I respond to the hospital. I meet up with the ER nurse who tells me, I think your victim has been burned, tied up, and tortured for the last 36 hours. Oof. Caught my breath. But what I was going to learn in the next few minutes nearly leveled me. I go and I interview her. She tells me that she lives in a small apartment with her boyfriend and his other girlfriend. Ooh, all right. She says this particular night, the boyfriend and the other girlfriend decide they're going to tie her up. Then they're going to burn her all over her body with a hot curling iron. Then they're going to throw her into a hot bath. At one point, she loses consciousness, which scares them. So they just pick her up out of the bathtub and they throw her onto the living room floor. And that's when the boyfriend decides to sexually assault her with that curling iron. I stop. All I can think about is getting justice for this victim. I'm pissed. While she's recovering in the hospital, I tell every cop I know, we got to get these guys. They are bad. We got to get them. Day and night, I'm searching for them. About a week later, an officer calls me and says, hey, I think your suspects are back in the apartment. Fantastic. Drive down there. We surround the apartment. I kick open the door and bam, both my suspects are inside. And then I can't believe my eyes. My victim's in the kitchen making dinner for them. I sit her down because I have to know why. How did we get here? What's the story behind this story that landed her here? She says when she, re when she was released from the hospital, she went home. Mom slammed the door in her face. She had no job. She had no money. She had no car. She continues to tell me that mom beat her most of her life and that many boyfriends had sexually assaulted her. She said in her short life that she's been living up to this point, this situation right here is the best thing she had going. I suddenly understood. I continued to work about another year and I landed in the homicide branch. I wanted to investigate the worst of the worst crimes to go after the people who had the audacity to take another human's life. When I arrived in the unit, there was only one other female. She was a supervisor. And I started to shadow all of the detectives, to learn the ropes, to learn everything that goes into building a murder case. And before long, I'm on my own. It's a cold, and I mean cold, Indianapolis people, cold. February night, about 2 in the morning. My radio goes off. I'm in the office by myself. I get a call to respond to a park. Someone had been hit with a vehicle. I put on my coat. I stop at the bathroom. I throw up. No lie. I'm so nervous, but excited in a weird, messed up way, right? I'm going to, to a scene. I arrive there, and I walk up to the car. And all I can see are the feet sticking out from underneath it. And all I can think about is the Wizard of Oz when the house <laughs> fell on the witch. Continue to investigate it. It sends me over to the 911 caller's house. I arrive on the scene, and there's two adults sitting on the porch. And I'm thinking, that's so odd. It is so cold outside. I walk up. An older gentleman says, my daughter is inside on the couch. OK. I walk in. There's a young woman sitting on the couch with about a six-month-old baby girl. She's got injury to her face. 
She's crying, she's disheveled. And I said, hey, I'm Detective Menina. You need to come with me downtown. We need to talk about what happened in the park earlier. She kisses her young baby. We get in the car, complete silence on the way to the office. And I'm thinking, God, this sucks. This woman's about to go to prison and her baby's gonna be raised with a mother in prison. We get down to the office, she tells me exactly what happens. She said earlier in the day, a friend of her father's gave her money to go buy new clothes. She grabs her best friend, they go to the mall, she gets a new outfit, he's taking her out that night. He picks her up, they go to the club, he gets upset with her because she's not interested in him, she's interested in the younger crowd. She's 20, my victim is 60. A verbal argument starts inside the club. It escalates out into the parking lot. There's video of them hitting one another. They're screaming one another. They both land back in the car, and she drives to the park. Inside the, inside the car at the park, they're still verbally and physically assaulting each other. But then he attempts to put his hand up her dress. That enrages her. She begins to really beat him to the point where he jumps out of the car and he starts running away. And that's when she hits the gas, chases him, and eventually runs him over, killing him. I thought, she just confessed this whole damn thing. I stand her up, I put her in handcuffs. We walk down this long hallway to the jail. I hand her off to the jail officers. I hand the arrest slip for murder, and bam, the jail door slams. I walk back down that same hallway to my office thinking, Ugh, this sucks. I actually kind of liked her and understood up to a point what had happened. She absolutely did something horrible. But she didn't wake up that morning thinking she was going to kill anybody. I needed her to look a little bit more evil, a little bit more killerish. I stayed in homicide for about nine more years, but I never forgot her. I decide I'm going to email her. We email back and forth. We're now friends. I even go visit her in prison. We st start to develop a friendship where she emails me one night and says, hey, will you pick my now 16-year-old daughter up and take her to McDonald's for her first job interview? Absolutely, I say. I go pick her up. It's awkward. <laughs> I locked her mom up 15 years ago. I just stay focused on the interview. <laughs> and I say, keep good eye contact with the manager. Just be yourself. I'm sure you'll get the job. That's when I realized my career became full circle. I wanted to be a cop to save people. After 25 years of law enforcement, seeing people for who they are, letting their stories intersect my own, I realized they saved me. All of these people and the experiences that I've had made me a better person. It made me a better cop, a better detective, a better daughter, a better sister, a better aunt, a better ex-wife. <laughs> Part of the job. I have to thank all of the people that have crossed my path because now my world is filled with the technicolor of connectedness, the kind of connectedness that allows me to see hope when there isn't any, the kind of connectedness that allows me to solve these cases with not only my head, but my heart, the kind that makes me feel really, really grateful for all the beautiful and horrible things that I've witnessed, and the kind that makes me feel really proud to be a police officer serving, not saving, today. I hope the lesson that you guys can take away from our short time together here is that whatever situation you're into or you're in, try to gain more insight because that insight will lead you to be more compassionate, which will lead, you to, be, which will lead to more connectedness, which will lead to a better world for us all. Thank you. Thank you.